Everyone needs an origin story. Washington chopped down the cherry tree and couldn't tell a lie. Genesis itself. People want to have a connection to the past. So there are competing origin stories because it's good to have a mythos. Whether or not a story is factual has nothing to do with whether it's true. I was told by someone who claimed to be at the famous bar fight that it started at a bar called Little Campus. I have been told multiple times by other people that that is not a true story. What has been passed down through time, we got into a bar fight with the Navy and they said, you're a bunch of nerds, you couldn't beat us at anything. Somebody responded with, well, how about croquet? I don't know where the legend about it being in a bar fight started. I mean, maybe it just it sounds you know, more exciting being in a bar. It had nothing to do with somebody being killed in a bar fight. It's actually a media-created event. The gadfly, the student newspaper, the guy who was running it was letting a lot of students on. Kevin Hayburn wanted to be on the newspapers. He said, sure, Kevin. And Kevin then said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, you can be croquet correspondent. And then Kevin discovered that there was nothing to write about, so he approached me and asked me what was going on. He was not really satisfied with the answer that he got, which was nothing or everything. You know, the croquet sets are there, people go and play and help themselves, so Kevin... Being Kevin, he decided to make some news. In the fall sometime, I walked over to the Naval Academy to watch the pep rally before the Army-Navy game. On our way back out the gates to the college, I saw Commodore Bud Edney, and not being particularly shy, I went up to him and introduced myself. I also told him I was interested in the history of both schools, and I had looked at some old yearbooks and saw that at one time, St. John's competed with the Naval Academy in sports. The Commodore said, that's true, but I wouldn't recommend that you challenge us to any sports now. So the Naval Academy got a team together and came over here, not sure really what expecting to happen, and we beat them. We beat them very badly, and they were kind of embarrassed. When I started, croquet was different. Somebody had donated a backyard croquet set to the library, which was what is now the Barbie Cannon Center. Don't tell the students this, but we would cut class on a Friday afternoon and we'd meet under the Liberty Tree and we'd play croquet instead of going to French. When it came time to play the match, we pretty much did the same thing. I don't think we practiced or anything and we certainly didn't have uniforms. I think that's a nice improvement. We all kind of wore the silliest thing we had in our closets. Well, one thing led to another and traditions that you see, some began at the very first match. A Navy band played the Star Spangled Banner. The Naval Hymn was played. We also had to sing St. John's Forever, although we had to find the song. No one ever sung it for years. And we had other traditions that we don't have anymore as far as I know. We actually had cheerleaders at the first game. Well, I remember the first year there was a kick line of six or eight midshipmen. They rolled their pants up over their knees and they linked arms and they did that for 30 or 40 seconds until they all fell over because they were laughing so hard. Afterwards, we all went to an academy professor's house and we had you know, burgers and hot dogs and stuff and just chatted. It's a nice way to reach across the street, which can be awfully wide at times. I think that croquet is important to St. John's from a traditional aspect. You can't really find it anywhere else at this scale. I think that St. John's is unique in so many aspects and croquet is just one of them. I think it's a way for the students and the alumni and the community to come together every year. I think the community often sees St. John's as this enigma. They just think it's a little strange. It's a way to really draw them in and show them how special St. John's is and give them just a little bit of a taste of what we do here. My very first Friday after classes were over on that afternoon, I came out onto front campus and there were people hitting balls around, having a beer. That looked like a lot of fun. So I came out and I joined them and I hit balls around and I found a game that had complications, that had precision involved, and I fell in love immediately. Literally the first Friday of my freshman year. And I continued doing that, despite the fact that I went to Santa Fe sophomore year. I literally came back to this campus, to Annapolis, to continue playing croquet.
In terms of dedication, I mean, there's students on the team who would go out at six in the morning and practice. They'd practice in the snow, they'd practice in the rain. Last year during the cup when we had to split it over two days, some of the people who still had their matches remaining were out there so early the next morning strategizing, up all night strategizing. I do think that the St. John's program does help with croquet. Croquet is an opportunity to spend a whole lot of time doing not a whole lot. You know, people talk about how it's three to five minutes of standing around followed by three to five seconds of activity. There's a lot of opportunity to visit, hang out, discuss, and just interact with the other people you're playing with. There's a strategic and logical part of croquet that if you're not in the game, you don't quite get. Students and community members who are watching are like, why are they doing that? That seems strange, or their turn's never ending and they don't quite understand why that is. In some ways, that's how the program is. Sometimes it's logical, sometimes it's daring, sometimes you just have to step out there and give it your all in class and on the field too. I think we win so much for two reasons. One is that Johnny's are collaborative. We collaborate in a seminar. Croquet, you collaborate in a team. The other is Johnny's love antiquated things. We love everything that is old fashioned. We like silly hats. We like Baroque music. We love polyphony. We love old paintings. So of course in croquet, it's an old timey sport. We're, we're gonna win. You know, St. John's draws a certain type of student, a type of student that is very dedicated to whatever they are interested in. And so you also have um, students very dedicated to music and practice music every day and are like in four different music groups. I think it's something similar with croquet. I think this has grown so much because most of the year St. John's is mostly its own world. We're an inward-facing community. However, Annapolis Cup provides a space for Johnny's to get together with the Naval Academy, our neighbors, get together with people in town. Yes, it's fun to play croquet. Yes, it's fun to beat Navy. But most importantly, it's a moment for us to all be together as a community. And I don't think it could be successful without that. I think one of the reasons things have continued so long is the schools actually have some real similarities. I mean, they're both really self-selecting places. You know, you have to really want to go there to go there, and you're different than everybody else when you go there. Maybe, you know, the outside we look different than the midshipmen. I think there's actually some core similarities there. Over the years, people have turned it into a big lawn picnic. They like to dress up, some wonderful music, people like to dance. It's a unique event. And I would like to think the Navy and St. John's continue to do it because they have accepted what was my original intention to have an event that would bring students from both campuses together, no matter whatever else happens. As long as the students can come together, get to know each other, have some fun, that's great.